like there's a wall in front of you constantly. It's an obstacle. That's life. And you're either going to bang up against the wall and keep hitting it and hitting and hitting, or you're going to figure out a way to walk around it. Hi, everyone. This is Rob Ocasio on another edition of Over the Wall. Today, I'm really excited to have a great friend with me, uh, Ron Agnello, who's a musician, a producer with extensive experience uh, in the world, works with Bruce Springsteen, Shania Twain, Gavin DeGraw, and just does amazing things on the creative side. We met on a plane and just had this instant connection because the world of creativity, whether you're an entrepreneur building a business or you're creating music or, or producing music, it, there's such a parallel there. And I want to have Ron on the show to really talk about uh, you know, how he got to where he is, how do you get over his walls, but also what is the creative process and what do you go through to, to create this amazing music that he brought to the world? So Ron, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good and to see you. Good to see you too. And um, where are you right now, by the way? I see you're somewhere. Uh, I'm in New Jersey. I'm in Colts Neck, New Jersey. Oh, wow. Are you in, it looks like you're in a studio or something. Yeah, I'm in the studio. I've been here six months. When COVID started, I came and I haven't left. I haven't been home LA for six months. For six months. Wow. So yeah. what, what's it been like just living in, in, uh, it's been, great. There? It's been great because, uh, like, uh, it's just a beautiful music environment, uh, make music at, you know, we have a, a little group of people that we spend our, all our time together and, uh, stay healthy, stay safe and just create. So what's it been like, you know, I guess we, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And like you said, I guess for you, it, it's like a cocoon of creativity there. You know, what's going on? Uh, what's it like creating in the middle of all this and the pandemic and everything? Well, I think it comes and goes. At first, it's just odd because you're not in your comfort zone. You're, you're just like taking taken out of your element. And but for me, it's been great because I've had peace and I've been writing and planting seeds for future projects. So I kind of like it being like somewhat antisocial. I, I like the, like the isolation aspect of it. And then with the group of you know artists that I'm with, it's great to be able to create. And then I learned like the, a, uh, to find a different routine. So like my routine is always like wake up, you know, have my time in the morning, and then go to the studio, you know, work on whatever I'm doing. So now it's like okay, well, I'm not going to necessarily go to the studio. So what am I going to do with my time? So I'll, you know, listen to different kinds of music, or I've started writing a book, you know, trying to finish a book, and I'm just doing different projects that I probably wouldn't have done had it not been for this. The so book you, mainly. Yeah, what's the book about? I didn't know you were writing a book. What's it about? Yeah, the book is, um, it's about where music comes from and why are some people gifted uh, at it, and some people can access it and some people can't. And uh, it's a fantasy for children, basically, or young adults. And it sort of takes the premise of um, what if songs or unfinished songs take the form of childlike creatures that one day long to become real songs, but can't because they're trapped sort of in a place called the song yard, which is like a graveyard. And they need to escape and find a creator to create them. Because I always question, like, where does creativity come from? Uh, how can you explain it? Because nobody can really explain, you know, why you write a song or why you get an idea or, you know, when all your, your 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 projects and what makes you think of that. And so I just was trying to put a um, narrative to that. And uh, I started it like years ago, but because of the pandemic, now I'm almost done. Hmm. So that's been a blessing. You know, I I have this belief. Like I look at my life as an entrepreneur and, and creative ideas and there's art in all of this and everything we do, whether you're making music or I even think building a company, but I've often believed God and however you define God, that there's something beyond us that puts that kernel of an idea inside of us that allows us to create. And right. I'm curious on the music side, you know, I guess where, where do you think it comes from? Cause I also think about music, you think about these hits, like you, You've been involved with making, you did, I think, Bruce's last four albums, I think. Is it three or four albums? Uh, the last? Yeah. And they, they've been really successful. Four five. Right, yeah. four or five. They've been really successful. And I, I listen to these songs. There's some that just are hits. And you think about, like, you get all these ideas as a creator, as an entrepreneur or a musician. Like, where does it come from? What makes a hit? 
you know, how, how do you channel that? Give me, give me like, I guess it's, a lot of it's going to be in this book, but, but give us a sense of where you think it comes from your, your ideas. Uh, it's just being uh, uh, curious with the feeling and receiving in inspiration. And I think um, you need a certain skill set to, to be able to manifest whatever inspiration comes, whether it's in business, whether it's playing a musical instrument, writing a song. And uh, therefore, you receive the inspiration, and then you use your tools to manifest it, and then you have something that you've created. And it's really stemming from really just a curiosity and this, this simplistic notion of like an idea. And it's when you answer those that call, that idea, that's when you're able to create create something. And you don't know that it's going to be good, bad, great, but the, the call is to 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 uh, be obedient to inspiration. But the, 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 the truth is that if you listen to your inspiration, that's how you sort of succeed in uh, your creativity. You know, that turns into creativity, which turns in, you know, you have to have skill to manifest that creativity into something. And whether it's a song, whether it's a business idea, whether what, whatever it is, it, you have to manifest it. You have to have a, the tools. But there's, a, there's like a, I always feel like there's kind of a risk with it. Like I, I, if we can go back to the beginning of like, before you were a musician or in music, you somehow you had this kernel inside of you, but there's a risk to it, right? Because a lot of people, they get this, even, you know, entrepreneurs and, you're like, you doubt it. Like, I don't have the skill. Why, why don't, why am I thinking up this idea? So maybe take us through your journey a little bit. Like, was it an overnight success? Like you, you were born a musician and you're like, um, wow, I'm a musician. Then you had all these kernels inside. You're like, I'm going to have some hits and then I'm going to be this great producer. I mean, like, tell, tell us a little bit. Uh, of how I, you well, I, I honestly think the obstacles that you're, you're up against really define who you become really. And whether it's social, some people, you know, uh, in their families, uh, some people have depression, some people don't like it's whatever is in your way and how you move around it defines sort of your unique brand of creativity. For me, I always wanted to be a musician and I don't know why I just did. You know, none of my family was musicians. My, my father played clarinet in college, I think. And I think my my grandfather's played violin, but I wasn't around music. I had some older brothers that would listen to music and I was always just mystified by, I don't know, it just, it just felt like magic to me. And I just was curious enough to, uh, to, to, to seek it. So doubt plays a big part of like, um, of what you are, because without doubt, you would just have faith and that would be un, untempered, you know, like you, a doubt tempers faith so you have to you know have a little bit of suspicion like or else you really wouldn't work hard you know oh, i just thought i was great i'm just gonna pick up yeah. a guitar and play it i'm just gonna get or i'm a boxer i'm just gonna get punched in the face and i'm down and out so i'm just gonna uh, you know doubt myself enough to be afraid of failure and just keep working on it there are all kinds of driving forces you know i i call this the wall it's actually why i term yeah. this the doubt or the failure defines right. us and that's where we learn and then we get over it and i almost feel like it's set up to keep the fakers out like if you're not committed and you're not passionate then the wall just like stops you and go find something else the part of this program is to be real about like a lot of times people don't talk about their failures and their doubts and i find people are out there on their own building things being creative you have a lot of that so maybe like what's some of the things early on that you can remember around that around failure doubt the things that you know, defined you? Well, when I was, we are talking about talking about uh, this and um, I've been thinking like my failures, my failures and my failures. And boy, I started feeling like a loser. Like <laughs> I told somebody last night, what are you doing? I'm just reviewing my life and I feel like a loser. <laughs> because, like, you know, I've had so many failures, but I can't honestly, like I would say, well, maybe I'll talk about this one where I didn't, you know, I had a band and I lost the band because the label folded and, they made platinum records without me, although I made platinum records with them. So I don't know if I can really express in terms of like failure. I mean, you don't get everything you want. Nobody does, period. And you just have to accept that, you know. But when I don't get something, I, it just drives me to work really hard 
to fix it the next time, you know? And sometimes it's beyond your control, you know? It's like, um, you know, you have no idea what the forces are. So I learned a long time ago to invest my own, uh, plant my own seeds, you know? I'm not, I'm mean, had an opportunity to sign a, with a record company as a record uh, executive and I didn't. And I just always uh, stuck to, I'm going to create, I'm going to fail and I know I'm going to fail, but that failure is, uh, you know, just going to be part of my journey and it's going to strengthen me to learn what roads to avert or take. Like there's a wall in front of you constantly. It's an obstacle. That's life. And you're either going to bang up against the wall and keep hitting it and hitting and hitting, or you're going to figure out a way to walk around it. And one of my mentors, who was a pastor, David Owen, my church, was like, that's what he said. Just step aside. And like, you, you, yeah, you want to write a book. You want to write a book. So da, da, da. But guess what? You maybe didn't write a book. You maybe wrote a, you know, a poem or you wrote a song or like, just go around it. And just the point is to move forward, you know. And not get and so, down. I guess it's you don't really want to get down, right? I, and I guess no. when you started, though, you wanted to be – in a band. I mean, you were in a band. You yeah, want yeah, to be the front. You want to be actually yeah. doing the music. And now you're, you've made a, a amazing career producing and working with some of the best artists in the world. But so you did take the path in, but it, it didn't. Not say I don't want to say it didn't work no, out. But it didn't work. It didn't, it didn't work. work out, right? So no, how did so that? I, I told my father. I said, like you know, I'd been like I had a record contract. We had record out. It, it was good. You know, it didn't work out. I said, I I just feel like I can help some other artists and like, like just fulfill what's lacking in others, you know, like as a, a part of a partner, like a coach and like, I can play instruments, I can write songs, I can sort of do everything that's needed. And I said, like, can I borrow a couple thousand bucks to get a couple pieces of equipment and um, learn how to like basically record and, and then he did that. And bought a little cassette player which has four tracks and I learned the equipment and it was nonstop from then it's like automatically everything was just like oh that's cool you know like that so I found my path in that way so had I been an artist I wouldn't be an artist right now I can tell you that I mean nobody lasts forever and I might be dead I don't know I don't I don't like to be on stage for some reason it's, it's just not my thing like I would stand on stage and like just daydream because it's it's not creative to me it's re, uh, uh, replicating creativity and it wasn't the same so in the studio and writing music and working with super creative people i'm creating something i'm building something growing something and that's what i'm sort of curious about and i'm addicted to that like that's just my wheelhouse so i just did a lot of that i did, did what i was good at Two questions, but one is like you—you you were on stage with Sinatra. You—you you played in yeah. the band, right? So like that yeah. was must have been amazing. Was there anything you learned from that? And and that's when you were on stage. Well, I saw greatness. Like I saw people's faces. That when he took time away, like you know, he would open his mouth, and all of a sudden, time stood still, and that was true greatness. And I was in Las Vegas and got this lucked out. I got got this job for a bit of time, and we went on tour and then i saw like what that connection was you know and i saw oh that's it that's he's that's a magic that's connecting you know i'm not frank sinatra like i don't even really sing so it really told me it mentored me in a way you know right. it's a mentorship in some ways uh, there's not like one like like philosophical figure in my life that was my mentor but that moment mentored me you know just seeing that and observing how people felt about him and how great those songs were and how he communicated those songs. So from there I moved to LA and that's why I said, okay, well, I'm going for a career in music. And I basically slept on couches, backyards, whatever I had to do uh, to follow that, you know, curiosity of music. This couch I'm sitting on right now, I slept on for two years. My first company failed and I, I was alone and I lost something. I, I lost that first company. And here I'm, I'm broke. I'm sleeping on a couch in a, in a dingy office in New York. And, but I, I, I guess I had, I always kept the faith and hope that, um, you know, and stayed positive. And I, I'm, I guess I want to ask you too, it's, this is one of the things that like after, as you get older and you've gone through the journey, 
it's sort of like, it's like all seems right. Like all the dots connected, but there are probably times where you're like, I don't know what's going on here. What's depressing is like not being able to achieve what you want and the vision of your head, you know? So uh, I, I was so young, it didn't matter. You're not going to climb the same, you know, mountain as an older man that you did as a younger man. It's frightening. You know, if I, if I look back and go, I like, I did that. That was crazy. Like I just moved to a city. Like it said, Studio City. There must be studios there. I'm gonna <laughs> move to Studio City. <laughs> I, mean, what, what, I was like an idiot, you know. But I'm young and like, like dumb and like, oh, go, Dad. I'm in Studio City. Like so. Anyway, so I'm. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, like I don't think about it. It was more romantic then. But then I do look back, and if and if I must, like examine. I did have lots of depression, like frustration, I guess is what it is, because, you know, you can play the guitar, you can write songs, but like, it's going to take a lot of um, drive to have a career and other things, you know, like beating people, getting lucky, you know, having the right songs, having the right singer. And um, so a lot of other things uh, you got to take into consideration and come into play. So uh, yeah, in some ways it was a harrowing experience. I would want never, probably want to do it again but i probably would not change it either you know so yeah, that, it just that, that's the yeah. odd thing like you're saying like in one way i wouldn't go back like i never want to start a company again strangely enough right. i don't like i i i've already had that experience and it's uh i, I now it all seems right at the time it just felt like uh, also i felt very down when you lose something like my career wasn't going right my the vision i had of my life seemed like i was a loser you know right. I, I wasn't making yeah. it, but I don't, it's funny. Like I said, you never go back though, right? You, you, you're kind of yeah. like, you can only move, I guess, to where you want to go, which, which that's my question. Like, is it over? Like, have you, have you hit the pinnacle? Uh, again, like, no, it's not over. Like I'm just as ambitious now as I was at, you know, eight and 15 and 25, you know, I wake up and I answer the call to my curiosity, my, my, uh, um, inspiration and like i'm writing a book i don't know how to write a book like i'm i just i'm so bad at it at times and i just keep going and keep going then i read a book and i go wow it's so much better than mine i'm throwing mine away and i'm gonna do it again you know like till i finally got okay at it you know and people kind of went cool so yeah i'm not stopping like i just am doing different different sort of roles in my sort of journey you know i mean i love what i do but can I go back and find a band uh, like, and like bring them through? And it, it's very hard. You know, I, I did do that recently in a, with, the, with the country project and it's very difficult. It's almost like going way back and you remember, okay, they're just learning everything. So it takes the amount of patience and then you just have to love it and have patience for it. You know, I, I, I don't know if I will ever retire. Will you? I mean, no, I mean, I, I guess I, I never feel like, I don't feel like I'm, I've achieved what I want to achieve. And, and yeah. it's, it's not about the money and stuff like that, or, you know, the, 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 these trappings or, or I, you know, I got to a certain place, but I don't know. I, there's a, sometimes it's such a frustration. I don't know how you feel, but I feel like, like, where does it end? And then I just think it ends when you die. Like maybe it never <laughs> ends. If you're curious, I don't know what you think, but it, it, so it seems like it doesn't ever end, right? Is that what you think? No, it doesn't. I don't think. No, if you're driven, I mean, look at Clive Davis and how old he is, his, his 80s, close to 90. And he's still like on the treadmill, listening to hit records, trying to find the hit. And I, I think you just got to drag me down, you know, like I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Like um, I can't, my, you know, what I don't like about myself is I, I just can't sit still like for, for give me two days in Hawaii and I want to go home. Like I, I can't settle down because just in my head and that's my regrets, you know, that, that, that I don't really have professional regrets because as, as I've said, the obstacles defined who I am. My regrets are all personal. We need to like take stock and appreciate what we have. And, you know, I've done, planted a lot of bombs in my personal life that I regret. And uh, it's all because uh, I love what I do and I want to do that more than I want to do anything. So Ron, where is the intersection between creativity, music, and being an entrepreneur? Where do, where do they intersect? 
Well, I never thought of myself as an entrepreneur until we started talking about it. Like, yeah, maybe I am an entrepreneur, you know, like, but I, I don't know because like, I, I, I never, I don't, it's, it's such a mysterious word, just like producer is, you know, that's a mysterious word to people, entrepreneurs. And I build things, I guess, uh, out of, like I say, my curiosity and uh, uh, my inspiration, I follow. I think the follow through is, the important thing you know music can stay inside your computer it can stay inside your head but you have to exploit it in some sense so like an entrepreneur that would have to uh, build businesses and build you know but the follow-through and the finish and what are you going to do with the song are you going to be you know touring are you going to be a band are you going to get a record is it going to be on the radio and i think in business that's the same way what do you do with it once you create it and that's maybe the entrepreneurial side of it. You know, I've been fortunate because I've had a lot of partners. You have to have a different partnership, I think, than what I've had. It's, it's, it's there's this relationship you have to have with the, with the musician, with these people who are in themselves are highly creative and, and, and been very successful. Like that. I don't know if I use the word teamwork with that. So it maybe no, cheapens it, but no. what, how do you get that? How do you get that magic? You know, working with somebody like Bruce or Shine, or you know, how do you how do you get the, the magic? Well, for for Bruce, it's an honor just to be a part. I'm just lucky because like Bruce is Bruce, and before me, he was like a legend. So I'm just lucky, and I just happened to come along at the right time. So what happens the first time you guys met? I have worked with Patty, his wife, who's a great artist, and uh, I knew Bruce's producer Brendan O'Brien, who was another mentor of mine. Uh, just because uh, of his life, like how successful and the great records that he did, that's like, wow, like, you know, I was just, and he took me under his wing and he, he taught me things and became my friend. So I was working with Patty. And then when he was looking for another avenue for his music, uh, there was an engineer, Bruce's engineer at the time recommended me. And he goes, oh yeah, uh, Patty's producer. And so I came out and Bruce played me uh, some music and like i'm just like my god like i'm just trust me like i'm a huge bruce springsteen fan so i couldn't like even believe it like you know my jaw drops like like okay cool so i'll come out i listen to the music i make some notes and he goes like i'm just looking to, to see what somebody else would do with a song of mine because like yeah i've been like at it you know he's done it the same way forever so going to the city and here's a song and do something to it so I had the opportunity and I blew the song up with the track and I was studying uh, some uh, um, film scoring music at the time because I thought I wanted to maybe do that, with which I love, but I was studying samples and strings and orchest orchestral and sort of going through that. And he happened to like be into that at the time too. So I put a whole thing together. And I play a, a lot of instruments. So I played the instruments. He came back the next day and he heard it and he goes, wow, like play that again. And, and he like he was surprised and like i said uh he goes well cool do do it to uh, i got 40 songs like, <laughs> like so. and uh i was like okay so i never asked if i had a job so we worked on um uh the what would be later the western stars album and i was here he never told me i had a job and i felt like you know when a pitcher comes in and like everybody around they don't talk to him because he might be out, you know, <laughs> like, like, it was like, nobody said anything like, oh, what's Ron doing here working with Bruce? Like, uh, it just worked and I kept my mouth shut and I, the manager's going, well, you're there a month now, don't you want to get paid? I go, no, nah, I, I, I'm not asking for anything. Like, I'm just doing this. Really? So you just did it, you did it out of sheer. <laughs> Absolutely. Good. And I, I need to say that like a big part of my life and my career has, I don't really do anything for money. and. Like if I believe in something, it has nothing to do with money. So you have to invest in yourself. You know, you do as in your business too. It, 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 you just can't expect that the, the, the fallbacks are the people that just like, well, I need to get paid for this. And this is my value here. It's like, you know, you don't know what your true value is because you don't know how big it's going to be. So anyway, so I, I, we work on that record and then he gets interested in another record, which is, which would be then wrecking ball. So I stay for that. And then I think I did that. So we had done a bunch of songs on one record and started another record. And he was finally inspired and called his manager and he came to play the music. And that's when I got the job, like months later, like 
his manager goes, okay, well, you're the producer. <laughs> like, I go, great. So it's just that like yeehaw moment. He goes, that's it. I said, great. <laughs> you know, that that's how it happened. But had I just, hey, you know, what am I doing here? Or do I got to get paid? I got to do, no, because like, I look at it like an apprenticeship, you know? He's yeah. a genius and I'm a huge fan and he's mentored me now. So I open myself up to that, you know? I mean, that that's how I think you have to, that's how I've approached. It's interesting. Somewhere I, I came to the conclusion, it wasn't about skill. It was about inspiration. Like there's people mm -hmm. I work with that they just inspire me to think differently. Like I, and and that alone makes me think I want to work with them and, or Bruce on the same thing, like something in the brain clicks between you and you're like, oh my God, we created a third idea. Like there's your idea, my idea, and there's now a third idea from yeah. our collaboration. Is that, you yeah. I assume is that that's what you're, you're doing with people like Bruce, right? For people every day. Yeah. You know, uh, different art, like someone has an idea and then sometimes they don't know their idea is great, you know, and then uh, it only takes someone to go, Hey, what was that you're playing? You know, that that's cool. Like then we all of a sudden at the end of the day, we have a new song, like we're doing that with Patty quite a bit. Who's a fantastic artist, but she comes in with like great ideas. And then we just help her like reflect and where, what the idea could be. And then at the end of the day, we walk out with some, there's no feeling like it. You just created something with a group of people, you know, pl playing off each other. I assume that's in business, like what you're saying, like, that's the same thing. And um, I know a lot of creative creative people like Hans Zimmer, the great film composer. Yeah. He's the same. He's like a group of, he's like a band guy. He's literally playing in a band, but with lots of musicians, but for film. Yeah. So uh, collaborations really essential. Yeah. I feel, I feel the same thing. There's, I mean, the, the thing is in business, we don't get to create, I don't think it's much volume. Like I'm always amazed at music at music because of the volume of things you can put in the world. Like we, I, I've created like three products in my life over 20 years, you know, and then when they've been birthed and people start using them, you get excited. Like somebody's using them. And I was going to ask you about like the collective consciousness about a bunch of people like what you created. Like, you know, like it's, in itself, it's kind of odd. You had this thing, yeah, you're weird. collaborating with Bruce or someone else and you put it in the world, but it, you know, now millions of people, are attracted to it and do you, like i think about that as like brand building like it's like you build something that is i think about brands as collective consciousness of people just connecting with it what, yeah. what's that about from your perspective a, that's hard a, to get that's like that's like oh yeah that's time. rare yeah it's rare uh, um, well for one it's hard to know because like how do you connect with those people so when i when I, I, for my role i'm in the studio we do a song it's a hit song and I go on to another project. So that person that made, you know, the artist, he goes on to stage and then he receives back what you're talking about. He receives back that collective energy. Okay, they're like familiar. That's part of their life. There's this is like music is is a non-pharmaceutical healing proponent, you know, and they're all being healed by a song. I mean, if it's an important song and rich, you know, I'm not, I don't mean like even a dance song, whatever, it really doesn't matter. So, um, uh, like they're connecting, but am I? No. So, uh, so I never know. I just, you know, people talk, you know, so, so recently I'm on Facebook. So now I'm connecting with fans all over the world, but I had never before. And, uh, so, and I love it. And they're, you know, some are crazy, but I mean, like a lot of them are amazing. I hear like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's like, like, like I, what, for what? Like, and I, and I just ask myself for, for what, what, for what? Like, this is not, I didn't write the song. It's Bruce's song or whatever, but they don't care. It's like whatever involvement it was to make something, they appreciate it, you know? And, uh, I am shocked how important music is to people. I am shocked, you know, and I just learned that really profoundly during this pandemic when you give something, uh, somebody they love like Bruce gives them something and they have it and they're just grateful. They needed it, you know? So when I, my first hit was funny because like, it was just like, like I had said before, a song and hanging by a moment, a life house. And it, it just became a number one song all over the world. They were doing it in little churches in China. Like, oh, my a friend was like, hey, I was in like this 
church in China with seven people and they were singing Hanging by a Moment. Like, and we always like imagine that like be a like a warrior that just like you sent out into the world and he just because you can't do anything about it. It's not not like we can market it anymore. Yeah. It's now just a song, like and it's out there. So it just has its own, it takes its own life. It's it's it just grows and grows and grows. And does it stay? If it's a good song, it stays for 10 years, 20 years, if you're lucky, you know? So that's um, incredibly rewarding, but a mystery. And like, I don't get it, but I'm, I'm happy to have been a part of any. But it's connecting. I, I think like the, the power of it is it's creating an emotion. Yes. It's not, it's not a, it's not some ethereal thing. It's a, it's a, something that actually creates an emotion. So I think even for entrepreneurs, whatever you put in the world, and I think that comes, it's maybe it's your emotion that you put into it and then you send that out in the world and yeah. because of your passion, your love for it and you put it in the world and it's, it's anything as it's being an entrepreneur, if you're making, if you're, if you're a baker baking bread or you make a product like we do technology, but I don't think it matters. It's like you put it in the world and it's supposed to let people feel something, right? Yeah. You're, they're receiving what it is, whatever you received, and then you you manifested it in music or whatever, uh, then they receive it. And then they have their own way of processing it. So for each person, is it a different experience? Like, it's interesting, you know, like, why does a sad song make you feel better? You know, like, uh, but a sad movie just makes you feel like shit. Like, like it's like you walk out of the theater, like, wow, that was a bummer. Like. Well, let's go have coffee, but I could hear a sad song from Adele or whatever, someone like you, and it just makes me feel better, you know? And uh, so I don't know, like the, it's a, it's a mystery. It's, it's a weird vibration that, that it's an esoteric like form of communication that sort of can't be explained. You know, we just react and receive. And I guess the key maybe is to make things that, that you can communicate that that you more love. people can receive, you know, right. like, that, you, that you love, that you're passionate about. Right? Yeah, because then they can feel that. Like our last record is live performances, and then generally in the studio, most music isn't live performance. You you know, you do this, you do the drums, you do this. Okay, now let's sing the song or let's do the vocal again. But this is like live performance of a band, which is um, it's not it's 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 as rare today. You know, it wasn't rare in the seventies. 60s and beyond before but uh but people feel that you know it's just a mystery and it's that chemistry between the collective energy between all those musicians together making something that was like felt very very powerful you know and then you know, honestly the reward it's a it's a good drink you know it's a good like dinner and like a week of joy and then like move on it's like whatever it's just move on it's like <laughs> exactly you know. it goes back to that it never ends it's a, you, yeah yeah you, so you, then what's next what have you done for me lately you know like so that's why you have to love what you do and any entrepreneur would i would just say that like um you just have to be passionate about it or it's just going to be a life of heartache you know so if you were going to give the entrepreneur a piece of advice i mean it sounds like that you know that's yeah would that be it it's like don't throw yourself yeah. off. Keep going. What 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 would you what would you yeah. give? Me? Well, it's first listen to the inspiration, and inspired ideas are the best ideas, and then get feedback collectively. You know, like like what we're talking about. Uh, you know, and seeing if your idea is being communicated in a way that's pleasing. You know, you play songs for people, and you're like, "This is the best song ever," and they're like, "Huh?" Like you know, you just never know. So I think. Uh, getting people's opinions important you know uh, so so that's another thing and then manifesting it designing it and follow through follow through follow through you know never quit uh, never quit i guess is no and there's obstacles and so what like then it would be just a straight line to success then we'd all have straight lines and nothing would be unique and individual i think the the obstacles and the the fear and the doubt and, and all that sort of like ingredients to the soup you know, and that's what's going to make you unique. And I mean, I have ideas and ideas that we talked about at dinner one night, like on my phone, just like hundreds of ideas, you know, but which ones am I going to follow through with? You know, and I'm only one person. Like, had I, and I think to myself, well, if I had like 
this corporation where I could sit on the board and I go, here's the idea, you know, like, like, and like, oh, let's do that. But that's just not like, it's I mean, maybe you, it doesn't, you can't, yeah, you can't. I, I, it, one thing I found early on, like, cause I also have a lot of ideas. If you feed those out in an organization, people start to think you're nuts. Like they just, they go, what, like, what are we going after? What are we focusing on? Like, was it yesterday? Yeah. Or is this, it's like the idea du jour here. Like, yeah. and, and a lot of people get caught into just throwing things out there with no follow through. Right. Right. Exactly. It's just uh, the, you have to narrow the spigot. So the, the water is powerful and comes out and it's stronger. If you just have this gushing flow of ideas that there's going to be no substance or power to them. So you have to, that's what I mean. Like, you can feel I feel an idea, feel a song. You know, I see the people that I'm around. Uh, they never think in practical terms of like they're just always just thinking creatively and what's best for this piece. You know, and I think that can be sort of <clears throat> labeled for uh, the entrepreneur and the business. And like these people have you know, huge businesses. You know, but I wouldn't even really call them businesses. You know, they're just. Uh, you know, exploiting uh, positive uh, cre creativity, you know, and that, that that's what I think. It's, it's really the follow through, though. Like, and if you can't follow through, you need to be with somebody that can, you know, right. you need a band partner, you know, if you can't play the drums, you better get a drummer. If you can't sing, you better sing. If you can't, don't know marketing, you better have somebody that knows how to market. Not better. I don't mean it in a threatening sense, but it's a good idea too. you know, that's right. Yeah. Ron, uh, Thanks for being on the show. And uh, as I as I promised everyone uh, when I created the series, is I want to bring people on that I think are obviously doing amazing things in the world, but you can see a parallel. Uh, the idea of, of being creative and being entrepreneurial. Uh, it's not th this idea of business, like entrepreneurs, there's everyone's an entrepreneur in the sense if they're following their dreams. And they've got these creative ideas they want to bring and manifest to the world. And and Ron has just done amazing things in, in the world. He continues now. He's going to have a book hopefully coming out shortly that we all can read. But Ron, thank you for your time. And uh, it's been My super pleasure. awesome. So thanks a lot, Ron. Cheers. <laughs>